Hello viewers and welcome to the Commander Center in the studio of the National Television Network, NTN. And I'd like to welcome you to the program, Agriculture on the Move. I am Philip Sidney. In studio today is Team Wasco. Why Wasco and agriculture? Of course, we're dealing with water. But just let me say to you that the ministry or the minister with responsibility for agriculture, fisheries, physical planning, natural resources and cooperatives has the responsibility for WASCO, which falls under natural resources together with uh, forestry and water resources. So that is why we have this marriage with WASCO and agriculture. With me is uh, Mr. Gordon Wyke, who is the head of the project management unit. Next to him is Cherian Williams, who is the communication and marketing officer. And next to her is Mr. Timothy James, who is the senior supervisor in the water resource department at WASCO. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thank, thank you, you very and much. And thank you for coming. Okay, Mr. Wack, I'll start with you. And of course, there are so many projects in that unit since um, I was associated with, with the ministry when on, on the, on the, the management of the minister. And I've been asking and craving to get Wasco to come on board and let people know what you all have done. I think you all have done a tremendous job. So, Mr. Wack, I'll start with you when it comes to projects. And I will start with uh, John Compton Dam, the rehabilitation project. I know the, why it, 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 uh, the, desil the desilting project is, is being undertaken. We also know um, that there are challenges. So tell us where, you, where we are with that project, Mr. White. Okay. okay, good afternoon, Mr. Sidney, and to your viewers as well. So the, as most of St. Lucia would be aware, the John Compton Dam was um, severely affected by extreme weather events uh, in 2010 and 2013 where we, right, had so this, uh, we had this significant uh, amount of rainfall, mm -hmm. uh, which caused a lot of uh, damage to the, um, to the reservoir itself. So subsequent to that, it was decided or ne necessary that uh, the, and, and these ex extreme events actually brought a lot of sediment into the, into the lake, into the reservoir area, and therefore in, and it filled up the, the reservoir quite significantly. And therefore, that would have, a, have had a great impact in terms of the water supply and the water security to the, to the nation. So it was deemed very necessary that this, a lot of this sediment be removed um, from the reservoir to provide the adequate amount of water supply that was available from the reservoir when it was, when it was constructed mm -hmm. in 1996. So the project was undertaken, and what we have essentially are, are two projects un that we have undertaken. One is the preparation of what we, called the, what we call the sediment disposal area, where the sediment from the reservoir will be transported, and I'll come to that in a minute, mm -hmm. to this disposal area. We began work on the disposal area in 2018, and uh, it was basically supposed to be completed um, last year. But um, very unlike our, our water supply, the, our water, um, water service, resources that, ha that happened this year in terms mm -hmm. of the very dry weather. The last years have been plagued by significant rainfall yeah. and has slowed us significantly in the, in the, in the work that, that we have been able to do. With that it is made though, um, we have made progress and the, 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 con the conditions of, of the weather th uh, this year have allowed us to make some significant progress over the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. So currently we are at about 80-83% um, completion of what we call, what we're doing, we're building what is called uh, our starter dike, which will essentially contain all of the sediment behind the starter dike. So we're about 80% completion of the starter dike, mm -hmm. and we are going to reach a point uh, by next week where we will we be at a, a particular elevation where we'll be, we'll be practically ready to begin, commence the movement of the sediment from the reservoir into this, into this disposal area. Okay. So we're very, very close to where we want to be in terms of readiness to move to the, to the handle the sediment. So let's talk about the other project, which is what we call, the, which would be the dredging, actually, right. actually of, the, of the reservoir itself mm -hmm. and the movement of the, of the sediment to the disposal area. Mm -hmm. That project, um, it, it was uh, it undertaken last year as well when we had to basically get the contractor on board 
and the, that contractor had to basically supply a dredge and also um, construct a pipeline from the reservoir to the disposal area okay. to move the sediments via the dredge to pump it across to the disposal area. So all that is ready is in place. The dredge is there, the pipeline is, is practically ready, and essentially we are, we are ready to, to begin the, the dredging works. However, of course, as we recognize, this year has been a, a very, very dry in terms of, of, um, of, where, of, the, of the weather, and we cannot undertake that dredging component as yet simply because the weather will not allow us to. We, we need to have some, some rainfall and for the reservoir levels in the, in the reservoir to rise. Correct. They have dropped significantly, and Mr. James could probably brief you on that. They have dropped significantly over the last few months, weeks and months, and we'd have to wait a little bit until we, we, can, we can see the rainfall return when we can be, begin the dredging. But the dredging will begin this year, um, in a few months, and we will be, to, to be able to remove the sediments and, and, and be able by that to provide a, um, our get our lower port, um, which is where we extract water from, get that, get that, that cleared, because it is blocked right now by the sediment. Once we clear that, we would now have a, a greater ability to provide water to the, to the rest to the nation. So both activities depend on the weather conditions. So right In now, a sense, yes. the, 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 the dry season is conducive for the completion of the sediment area. That's correct. Okay. Yes. But of course, if that is complete and you do not have enough or rain water mm -hmm. to do your dredging. You cannot do your dredging. Correct, exactly. It will hamper us significantly, yes. Okay, so how, how soon from now are you thinking with the, with the dry season on now for the completion of, your, of the, the sediment area? Yeah. Okay, so as I said, we're going to reach a level by the end of next week where we think we can begin, we can have a capacity available for dredging. Okay. That, that would definitely be the case. Okay. But we have to also continue for, I would say, another, another four weeks or so beyond that, four to six weeks, mm -hmm. where we're going to raise the level even further and have additional capacity um, available for, for the sediments to be, de to be deposited. Great. Timothy, well, boy, the, the, the work is on your back now because tell us <laughs> what's happening to the dam in terms of the, 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 the dry season. Um, we know it's the, the water levels have gone down considerably. Tell us exactly what are your constraints, basically. Okay. Um, <coughs> as most persons know, we had a drought warning was issued at the end of March. I think on, on March 31st, well, it was announced in the around April the 6th. Um, when um, we were informed about the drought alert. Basically, from the 1st of March, we were at an overflow level at the John Compton Dam, which was um, 333 feet above sea level. But what we realized in the month of March, the levels start going down significantly because of the lack or the below average rainfall which has been experienced around the island. As we speak today, May the 29th, we are now at a level of 316.7 feet above sea level, which is about 16.3 feet below the overflow point. That level, it is actually close to the only port which we are currently abstracting from, which is at 312 feet above sea level. So we only about four feet away from that level which is very worrying for us in terms of because we just in May and when we had our last dry season or, 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 or severe dry season, which was in 2015, we, our lowest level was 320.6 feet and that level was reached on July the 10th, mm -hmm. 2015. Okay. So literally two months, almost two months away from July in terms of getting to a level. So because of that, we, we had to do a number of initiatives in order now to be able to abstract water from below that port because we realized that um, based on the Met, the announcement from the Met, we realized that we will not be getting a break anytime soon from that severe dry weather. Even though as of June the 1st, we're going to be getting into the hurricane season, but that doesn't mean mm -hmm. that we're going to start getting rain water immediately. Mm -hmm. um, even to put it in perspective, we had a, 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 a tropical wave which passed over the island between the 20th and the 21st of, of May, which was last week. And we only was able to get an increase of about 0.3 feet in the dam. We only got, what, 19.6 millimeters of rain, which did not do anything significant to even raise the levels in the reservoir. Wow. So 
that's why we were doing we actually doing some stringent water rationing. I know customers is been um, been impacted severely, but we had no choice because we had to manage the limited amount of water we have to ensure that it lasts throughout the entire dry season, which we're not sure how long it will last. Um, we, you know, we have to look at things in two ways. We want the rain, but still we don't want San Rocha to get any severe weather like a hurricane mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. cause even further destruction, but mm -hmm. we need the rain and we would like it maybe in increments so at least it could start raising the level of the dam. If we do not get the rains, we have already put um, <coughs> put action and put things in place to be able to now start abstracting from the, the lower port if we, if we get um, to that 312, which we think um, based on the current trend, we might get to that by maybe the next two weeks. But we, we realize that we cannot even wait to get to the 312 because at the 312, that's the lowest you're gonna take out water from the current um, system, the current um, um, arrangement at the dam. Mm. So we have to make arrangements to even start doing that before we get to that level. But the lower port is blocked, right? Yes, the lower port was blocked in after Hurricane Thomas, mm -hmm. which expert says between, say, um, is about, well, when it, first, when it was first done, it was, they said we are 19 feet above that port. But um, we're not sure what it is now because after that we had some severe weather. We had the Christmas Eve trough and then other mm -hmm. weather events. Mm -hmm. So we're not sure. Um, at, at the exact thing. I know the, the project unit has done the, the um, various tests to see what amount of sales, so they may have a more accurate figure now. Okay. Because you're talking about 10 years ago, that's Hurricane Thomas, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they now would have more in-depth study to see what exactly, how far up we are. How, how much water is extracted on a daily basis from the dam to supply your, your customers out there? In okay. The in normal circumstances, when everything is okay, we abstract between 7.5 to about 10 million gallons per day. Depends on, um, you know, your, your demand. Mm -hmm. Also, to augment that, we also abstract from the, the Vana intake. That's what I'm so we, we, we abstract about 0.9 million gallons per day from the Vana intake on a normal basis so that we, what, because of that, we're able to abstract less from the dam on a normal basis. Okay, but you also have, they also have this um, dam in Ravin Paso. Uh, is, is that under another area yes. you can extract from? Right. Ravin Paso is another backup area for um, if in case we need, ex well, especially now during a time like the dry season, we had Ravin Paso as a backup, backup mm -hmm. to abstract water. But even at that, that um, river realized that the flows are quite low and it, 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 it did not make sense. Um, it, it wasn't making any sense to, to abstract water from. That, but, but we, pre we did prepare us that, that, that area, we desilted the river, we prepared our pumps, so we, we are able to abstract water from it. But because of the current flows, it, it, it does not um, support you know, us taking any significant amount of water from it. What does the, this other dam, that is the dam they call Tissot, um, before the um, John Cantum Dam was, was, was constructed, right. you only saw that water. Is, is that significant we, now? We still, we still abstract water from that. That's our gravity source. Mm -hmm. But because of the, dry, the current dry season, you hardly get anything from it. Wow. The amount is because it's, it's, it, there's no area there where the water is damp. Mm -hmm. It's like um, <coughs> straight from the, the river. Mm -hmm. When we have some heavy rainfall, you could get as high as 3 million gallons a day or more uh, okay. from that source. But as you go in through the dry season now, it would be even less than a million gallons per day. Okay, Chayam, before we, we, we end our first segment, mm -hmm. I know customers are calling you and you're being bombarded with calls. How are you coping? Well, we are coping well in terms of giving customers information about what the current situation is. Of course, um, the communications unit is supported by the control room where we also have communications officers who respond to customers who have queries and complaints and so on. And that is in addition to the um, customers who would come in on, well, during normal working hours to our customer services department so mm -hmm. those representatives also assist mm -hmm. um, in terms of providing information 
Um, we do that on a, a regular basis based on the information received from the technical team, Mr. James, Mr. Wyke, and um, others who provide information to us to let us know exactly um, what the situation is as it relates to water distribution. And um, we translate that information in simpler terms. Mm. We, we, we take it out from you know, the technical terms and take out all of the technical jargons used there. Mm -hmm to put it in simpler terms so that um, the customers, uh, all customers would understand, at least that is the objective. Mm -hmm. um, we do have to explain to them a lot about why the rationing system is necessary and we do we find ourselves having to tell them how the the system works because people pretty much don't have a a great appreciation or a good understanding of how the system works because of the queries and complaints that are logged. So we we are able to deduce that and we make sure that we are able to um, present the information in a way that is palatable and in a way that they can understand. Mm -hmm. um, we know that it is inconvenient at this time in terms of um, people getting water at their homes. Um, the taps sometimes do not flow. And we understand how inconvenient that is. So we try to impress upon people the need for um, them to take responsibility for storage at home. Because mm -hmm. that is a, an, an area that we find our customers are very deficient in. And we try to encourage them to have extra storage, not only with as it relates to buckets and um, other receptacles, but storage tanks. Mm -hmm. Because of the fact that we understand that um, sometimes you, the water arrives at certain locations at um, odd hours, hours yes. when people are probably asleep and um, it's not pretty practical for people to be up you know, trying to store water or trying to, you know, fill up their receptacles. So if you have a storage tank, for example, it can eliminate the hassle of you trying to wait up for the water with no guarantee mm -hmm. of when it will come. Mm -hmm. So we try to impress that upon our consumers, our customers a lot. In light of COVID, <coughs> um, correct me if I'm wrong, where the asking customers in terms of payment, mm -hmm. uh, how is there a mor moratorium on payments? How, how, I don't know, how, how does that well, work? Well, we can tell customers or um, reassure customers, in fact, because we've said it before, that um, there are no plans for any sort of disconnection. Okay. So until further notice, there are no plans for disconnection. Um, we did release a statement informing customers that all our services had resumed. Mm -hmm. And um, that is because at the height of the, the, the whole COVID and lockdown period, um, we had scaled back to two of our services, only two of our services being offered. Um, among the services that resumed would have been um, the disconnections. But we wanted customers to understand that disconnections are not automatic. And it is not something that is always imposed on customers by the management. Um, this service too is also requested by some customers in certain instances. Mm -hmm. And we wanted customers to know that if it is something that you request, if it comes to us upon your request, then we are able to do it. And um, some of the examples of this that I want to you know, point to is if people are moving from one apartment to another, if people um, have a vacant building that they want to cut the utilities on and so on, we are able to do that for them. So in that light, in that sense, um, the disconnection services would be granted if you request it. Um, the other services that we offer, the bill payments, the queries and so on, these are open. So in the case where customers are not able to meet their financial obligations to pay their bills and so on, we understand and we want to work with customers. So we are encouraging them to come in, speak with us. Um, tell us where you are at in terms of meeting your financial obligations mm -hmm. and if you are not able to do so. Um, and I'm sure we can come to a workable arrangement. Um, 
Conversely, if there are customers who are able to pay their bills mm -hmm. and who are not as affected as others mm -hmm. in terms of their finances, we do encourage you to come into our offices and, and make those payments. Mm -hmm. um, you want to eliminate having a backlog of payments to clear. Yeah. So we want to encourage you to you know, come in and, and make those payments. Very good, very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll do for our first break. You're watching Agriculture on the Move. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon. In a world where germs are widespread, comes a group of superhero germ busters. The germaphobes. We spend most of our time fighting germs. Every day of the week. After I play, I wash my hands. Before I eat, I wash my hands. After I play with my puppy, I wash my hands. I cover my sneezes with my forearm or elbow when I am in public. And I cover my cough to avoid spreading dangerous germs. We are the germophones, germ busting superheroes. You can be too. Always wash your hands and cover your sneeze and cough. Let's stop the spread of menacing germs. We'll be back, germophones with more powerful germs. And we will be waiting to prevent you from spreading. Welcome back to the program, Agriculture on the Move, but we, uh, we have Team Wasco in the house. And I think everybody is glued to the television, I'm, I'm hoping, because you want to know when you get in water. But just do a little more praying and you'll get water. <laughs> Mr. Weck, let's move on to another program that is very dear to me. Um, I saw the birth of that, that, that project. I remember some years ago, um, that's a long, long time ago, maybe about 10, 15 years ago, we, there was a committee down in the um, Demley North area, in the, in the Mabuya area, uh, a community group, and of course, water availability was a problem. Mm -hmm. And we, with our engineer from the ministry, we walked up, you know, some steep slopes to get to see, you know, where the, 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 the river could have been dammed and whatever. But nothing happened since. And the people kept on getting, you know, um, muddy water, as you know, okay? Um, I'm happy that this project, you know, has come to fruition. And of course, tell us exactly the commencement, where, where the seed was sown and where we are today. Okay, good. Yeah, me t like like you, I'm 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 very pleased to be part of maybe involved with that particular project because I mean I've been told you know the stories and uh, the, the horror stories of years and years of people being without water mm -hmm. in the Denry North area. So it, it was a great satisfaction to be able to involved in that, be involved in that, and to see uh, to see people getting a, a, a good supply. So essentially, the Denry North project, as it is, um, the just the Denry North area, um, essentially was a project that um, was funded by the Caribbean Development Bank, okay, and also by, a, with a grant by the government of Mexico as well, right. too, okay. So it was um, essentially done in two phases, and the first phase was completed in 2018. This first phase essentially dealt with building the water intake on, 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 at the upper up Marmore Valley, running a water pipeline, uh, and also to a new water treatment plant that is in Tomaso. Okay, this is the first phase. Um, overall, the project is supposed to supply about 1.4 million gallons of water a day, which is what it's doing now. But in the first phase, we just were able to supply about 0 0.4 million gallons of water a day. Right. As for, so the, the plant was essentially built to accommodate that, and then there was, a, uh, there was some transmission pipeline put in place. That, under phase one, we found areas such as uh, Mont Panache, Richefort, uh, Tomaso, they got a supply from the, from the, from the plant at that particular time. And and this, the first, the first phase, phase yes, which lasted about 12 months. Okay. Okay, so in tw early 2019, they were being serviced and they had a very good supply at that point. Um, phase two, we had a, a year's gap or so before we, we were able to implement phase two of the project. Phase two basically was to expand the water treatment plant from the 0 0.4 to 1.4 million gallons to expand the transmission capacity to uh, uh, the further areas of, the, of Denry North. We also built um, what, three new pump stations and rehabilitated one particular pump station. And we built a number of new storage tanks, one at uh, Tomaso, one at Mont Panache, and one at Dinner Rivere. Okay, so 
essentially what we did so all of this infrastructure went into place and the storage the storage capacity is about was about 300,000 more cubic meters of, of supply stored in the inner area to supplement what was already there okay so this is all done at about a cost of about 8.64 million US dollars this okay. is phase two we have essentially completed the project and it was essentially on stream from about February of this year Okay. We had a transition period where we moved from the old system back by November, December, transition into the new system by January, February. So at this point, um, residents of Denry North are receiving uh, a better supply, uh, a better served supply in terms of having all the capacity into the pumps and the storage, uh, and the storage tanks and so on. Of course, they are also impacted like everywhere else in St. Lucia by the dry the drive season. Mm -hmm. But even so, the, because of the infrastructure we put in place, we're able to get a, a supply to, to the, area, the residents right now. So it, it, it has, we have seen tremendous improvement in the, in the Denry North area because of this particular project. You know, so we're, we're quite happy with what has, has occurred there. Great. So Tim, yeah. falls back to you now. So you're happy now. Tell us, tell us okay. how you know, you're working the system. Of course, with the dry season you know, on right now. Okay, as Mr. White indicated, in the Denry North, um, customers are quite happy. Even though we have reduced flows at our rivers, but because of the, 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 the size of the population and the demand, we're still able to, to supply that area um, with quality, consistent, efficient supply of water. So that's what they're doing enough. Mm -hmm. However, um, further south, you're talking about from Miku all the way to Sufre, our, the yield from our intakes have reduced so as much as 80% of water. So that means um, in a lot of areas, we are stretched in terms of supplying our customers with um, pipe bond water on a regular basis. You mean Miku too? Miku right around to, 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 to. you're talking about um, Miku. We have reduced um, um, flows, but there are various parts of, of Miku, say Monipu, and other areas where that the water supply is not as consistent. Mm. Um, we, we have to do a lot of trucking in the south um, to get to residents, especially in Salty Bus and these areas in Viewfort. Um, Shuzel, again, we have problems in, in terms of reaching all our customers. So that we, the whole south from Sufre to Miku, um, in this, in various, you have various areas which are, um, um, because of the yield from the river, mm -hmm. we have issues with supplying our customers at a regular basis. There are some persons that may be out of water for three weeks, two weeks, and depends on where you are and according to what elevation you live, because the higher you are, it even takes a longer time to reach you, or more close enough other areas to get to your area. Mm -hmm. um, the can reason the ancillary systems are holding up. Um, these normally hold up during a dry season, and so far they, they, they're still holding up. Um, uh, you know, even though we have lost a um, um, significant amount of water in terms of our, you know, the, the raw water side, but still we are holding up in terms of getting to our customers. Um, the Babano area has been impacted severely. We sometimes go down as, as low as 90% from our normal, which is only be able to get to our 10% of the water we normally get to produce, to supply our customers in the Babano area. And the Babano area includes not, the whole, not only the whole of Babano, but you're talking about money, the one as far as um, Labon, Diramo, Wafimokok, um, Magwetut, Monsito, and all these areas receive water from the, the Hill 20 treatment plant. Okay. So because of that great demand, um, the raw water is, is, uh, has a significant impact on that. So what we have been doing, and thankfully, we have the John Compton Dam. Yes, um, the levels are going down rapidly, but because of the John Compton Dam, now we are able to augment the supply at Hill 20 by supplying them from the, the feeble treatment plant via the Mon towards um, um, Babono to help augment the supply in Babono to be able to reach our customers. So sometimes we have to do it at least three times a week um, to do that. But although we affect other customers who depend on that same supply, say from the um, North, um, um, Castries North, Etc. and even as far as Balata, but you know, we have to do it because we cannot leave um, Babano without water, mm -hmm. whereas another community will be enjoying. So we, it's, it's a, a difficult balancing act, 
I know a lot of customers, you know, get irate when they don't get the water when they expect it. Um, but we try our best to, to, to reach everybody. Um, the higher elevated areas are always a challenge. Um, some areas we actually have to truck to them because it, 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 because your system is empty, it will have to take a f maybe four days to actually get to you. And so what we do to help ease the burden, we try to truck to those areas where we know it will take a while to reach. Um, what we have been realizing that we still, I think, um, we as a nation, we still do not look at water storage as a, as a serious thing. I guess because sometimes we have it in abundance, we take it for granted, and we only realize that we don't have it when a dry season comes around. Mm -hmm. I see people rush to get water tanks. tanks. Mm -hmm. Even they have lines. Um, um, right now, certain companies have persons on a waiting list for water tanks because <laughs> it's a high demand now, yeah. and persons never see it fit that you know to get all this storage available. Um, even on, even during the rainy season, that we still don't understand that we need to have storage because if we have a severe hurricane and yeah. all Wasco infrastructure is damaged, Correct. where are you going to get water? You don't have, not even um, um, the rainwater you'll be able to harvest. And I think we need to take rainwater harvesting even Seriously. more serious mm -hmm. in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. We build a lot of our houses and we do enough. We could, and it's, it's not so much more money to add a, a, a system to, to at least capture at least 5,000 gallons of rainwater. We can, we can have it as part of our mortgage when we, we negotiate for our mortgage loans so that when you're doing your foundation, when you, you can have now your assistance as part of the whole, um, 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 and not an afterthought. And I think, we, I think that's something that we have to educate our masses in terms of water storage. Um, persons complain that you send the water at midnight. I don't send the water at midnight. <laughs> the water gets to you at midnight, at midnight because of where you are. Correct. Correct. But if you have a water tank, while you're asleep, your water tank will fill up. If you're at work, and they say the water gets to your home at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. and you, you go to work, you get back home at 6 o'clock. Sometimes by the time you get to work and the demand in the area increases because everybody bathing, if you're high up, you might lose the supply. Now, if you have a water tank during the day, all your storage will have filled up. So night time now, you have your stored water you can use, and it can be replenished. And then you have still have to look at storing water for at least based on the number of persons you have in your yeah. home. Mm -hmm. So you cannot have a 200 gallon tank to serve 10 of you or five of you in the house for say five days at least minimum. Mm -hmm. So even case, so you, you look at all, all these various factors in terms of planning and stuff to, 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 to make yourself more resilient. And I think we, 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 we don't practice resilience in St. Lucia in terms of how we you know do anything i think there's I, i'll take the step further because it's not now i'm a little of sherry and you probably would know um if you a plan is a plan uh, a house plan is sent to planning for approval i've been hearing this day time and time again it will not be approved if you don't have a system okay who's policing this Okay. Well, I think it may be too, it maybe has to go maybe in terms of um, um, legislating these things. Now, if it's not legislated or it's not part of the building code, persons will still because... I've been having this for years. Well, it's not, maybe it's not been, uh, uh, it's maybe not been put in place. So, I remember after Thomas, that was a big thing. Yeah. Because persons remember when the dam had this, this big, the, the damage and persons fought would have been out of water for three months. Mm -hmm. But thankfully, because of the hardworking staff at Wasco, we were able to bring back the dam in less than two weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Persons were talking about the rainwater harvesting. But from the time, and what I find about us, when the iron is hot, we... We are, we, we are reactive. Reactive. We're but after proactive. when things get back to normal, we forget. Mm, yes, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and stuff. Look at even COVID-19. When persons, St. Lucia had COVID and stuff, everybody have their masks. Now persons around, mm -hmm. they forget about the six foot, they forget yes, about wearing masks, mm -hmm. they forget everything else mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they feel that's gone. Mm -hmm and we become complacent and not do what we're supposed to do. One of the things um, I'm hearing, if, like now, um, I've heard it be before, but it's coming to the fore even more now. Why Wasco is not building more storage capacity, say, in the north? In other words, I'd like you would want um, residents to buy tanks, build, build, build cisterns, um, they're still saying Wasco still 
um, are not living to their expectation. In other words, if you know the capacity in, in the north is X, all right, during the rainy season, you have a capacity. So in the dry season, it will augment. What, what, you, what, are, you your, what are your thoughts? Remember you, okay, we have, okay, look at the raw water side. We have our storage, mm -hmm. the dam, mm -hmm. okay? That's a big, you go look at it as a big reservoir. Correct. Without that, we would have been serious problems. In terms of water tanks, we do have a lot of storage. Persons will argue, yes, we need to have more. But guess what? You still need the water to be consistent to get to those storage tanks, mm -hmm. to always keep them filled. Because if you don't have the continuous supply into water, a storage tank, let's say you have a 100,000 gallon tank, mm -hmm. and you have, say, 20 customers, and each customer have a 2,000 gallon storage, that tank will be empty within two days. Mm -hmm. So you still have to have the continuous supply into the tanks. Yes, I hear you in terms of us doing that, but I think there are other things we, we're going to do. Because of the dry season, and you realize that um, person talk about um, climate change and the change. What we realize now, the, the average rainfall levels have been dropping. We have below average rainfall. So now we, as a company, are looking at other ways to now be able to survive this drought, especially in the south. So now we're talking about diesel plants, mm -hmm. even one a major one in the south, especially because the south don't have any dam. Mm -hmm. So that would help in terms of the, 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 the dry season to always have water available to our customers. And then you yeah, look at the north in terms of the demand, the, the, the rate of, of, of demand, the, the growth in terms of population. Um, because after a while, yes, the dam still serving its useful purpose. But over the years, you will find that even the water we produce in front of the dam may not be enough to supply us with water for the next maybe you know 40 50 years shocking so water shocking water what how is that managed in terms of priority because people are calling mm -hmm. and they're saying that they have no water for five days ten days um what how does that system work do you do you how do you prioritize do you have enough trucks to truck water to those areas at any given time well when you come to info um, um, you'll never have enough <laughs> to supply um, our customers in terms of trucking. What we do, we look at, we, based on the calls we get from our main call center, the control room, mm -hmm. we look at your location, and if we know we can supply you via the pipe, we will not send a water truck in your area because we know, okay, we, yes, you may be out of water for the last two days, but we know by day four or five, we'll be able to supply you via the pipe. Okay. But we'll give priority to customers we know for sure we will not be able to reach you maybe in the next six, seven days because of where you are. Correct. Which is in the high elevations. Correct. Because a lot of persons in the high elevations, it takes a while, even on a normal basis, to water to get to them. So we'll give priority to persons in the high elevations in terms of trucking to them. We will not truck to somebody we know that we can maybe simple close a few areas for them to get water. Mm -hmm. So we'll prioritize based on that and based on the... And then we look at various agencies. So if you have a, a, a senior citizen home that may be out of water for, we would give that a priority. Okay. You look at, you know, maybe even the schools, even say a public area like a, a police station who have prisoners house, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you want to ensure that you, they always have water. So you look, it, it's a, 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 it's very dynamic and it's not something that you, you but you just try to, based on your, your information you have from the control room, you look at it and say, okay, we can concentrate on that area today. Um, we'll try to see how we can best um, supply them via the pipe. And um, even now, we have to close off a lot of areas. Um, mm -hmm. We close off a lot of areas on a nightly basis to ensure that other areas get. Sometimes it doesn't always work. Sometimes things change because where you may plan to do something, something else could not work. And then you have to now go back to the drawing board and see how best you can um, solve that. Cherry, mm -hmm. we look at other areas in terms of your water-related um, you know, emergencies and stuff. How, how, do you, how, how, how do you work around this? Okay, well, just to explain what the water-related emergency is before we go on to you know, how we work it out, mm -hmm. um, the Minister for Agriculture, who is also the Line Minister for WASCO, um, issued that water-related emergency um, on May 15th, and it took effect on the 18th of May. Um, the 
the issuance of that water-related emergency came um, on the advice of the Water Resource Management Agency, which is um, pretty much a custodian of the, um, the water catchment areas and so on. So based on their advice, um, Mr. Joseph was able to issue that water-related emergency. And um, it's pretty much because of the, the situation, the drought situation that we are facing, the shortages of water, the um, significant decrease in the supply of water that we would have normally had to supply our customers. So based on that information and based on a lot of, you know, back and forth and, you know, really finding out whether or not it was necessary to do so, um, that water-related emergency was issued. Um, of course, there are prohibitions associated with that water-related emergency. And as it implies, um, it is issued so that people know that it is, they are only to use water for necessities. Mm -hmm. So any, any activity that would um, have you using water for um, non-basic activities is prohibited. And based on the water-related emergency, the prohibitions therein are um, for the washing of a vehicle using a hose, for watering of a lawn, hedge, garden, farm, ground, and recreational field, for pressure washing of or pressure hose washing of a house using a hose or watering or washing a roadway, pavement, path, garage, or outroom for concrete mixing and block making, um, to fill a leaking or overflowing storage tank and a swimming pool. Um, also in that water-related emergency, um, there are actions that you need to stay away from, deceased from, and among that is tampering um, with Wasco's infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And some people tamper with the infrastructure to divert or abstract water from the network, which is prohibited under the water-related emergency. Um, the abstraction of raw water upstream of Wasco's infrastructure or upstream of the intakes is prohibited. Um, any activity which may require the use of a considerable or excessive quantity of water is prohibited. And with these prohibitions come penalties. So if you are caught um, in breach of any of these activities that have been outlined in the water-related emergency, then um, a person who contravenes subsection 1 commits an offense and is liable on summary conviction to a fine not exceeding $3,000 or to a term of imprisonment not exceeding six months or to both and to a further fine not exceeding $50 for each day during which the contravention um, continues. Hmm. So, so who's policing the police? Uh, that, is, <laughs> that is a very good question. And um, people have been calling into WASCO to make reports that people are mm -hmm. in contravention of the um, prohibitions or, or the, the conditions in the water-related emergency. Okay. And we have to let people know that while the water-related emergency um, relates directly to WASCO and our operations and um, pretty much protecting the water resource that we have, um, we are not, we as a company are not the um, responsible body for policing um, the activities by members of the public who are in breach of this water-related emergency. Um, so that responsibility falls on law enforcement. So the people can make reports to the police with regard to um, anybody who is found in contravention of the um, water-related emergency. So anybody who is um, participating in an activity um, that falls under what, what I just mentioned from the water-related emergency can be arrested, action can be taken against you. Now, um, in this water-related emergency, I know that there are certain areas that may raise an eyebrow. Mm -hmm. And um, when I read the section that relates to concrete mixing right. and block making... Yes. I was, um, I was yes. wondering. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, 
So we are not, Wasco is not going to come to stop a business from, you know, um, operating, a, a construction business from operating. Um, this does not fall under our purview. However, and I can, I can point to an example where we got an application from a construction company asking for permission to continue its operations in two locations um, during this water-related emergency. And we had to direct um, this company to the Ministry of Agriculture and the Water Resource Management Agency, mm -hmm. which of course is the agency responsible for the upkeep of the intakes and you okay. know, making sure that you know, they are um, in a state where we can get water and safe water and so okay. on, and they are protected mm -hmm. because a lot of those intakes are um, pretty much rivers that are found very close to farms mm -hmm. and so on. And well, some of the activity related to farming can can impact, mm -hmm. impact yes. the water and the amount of water we have available. Mm -hmm. So we don't want any contamination and so on. And the Water Resource Management Agency is really the agency pretty much policing um, the water and making sure that it is safe and it's not contaminated and so on. So you moving forward, you have not gotten any problems, any people are calling, but when people, when people, people are call, calling, what, but what we, do you all do? We guide them in the direction of the police. We ask them to make a report with the police and so on, and they would take it from there in terms of actually enforcing the water-related emergency, because it, this is not, um, this is above Wasco's purview, it is mm. beyond our purview mm -hmm. to take any sort of legal action against anyone who is in contact prevention of the water emergency. Okay, so so you 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 know you know your area. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, we know our limitations. <laughs> okay, I believe we are due for our another break. You're watching Agriculture in the Move. Stay tuned, and we'll be back soon. information, please contact the hotline at 311 or the Bureau of Health Education at 468-5349. Welcome back to the program. Mr. Wegg, let's go straight into the V4 Water Redevelopment Project. Mm -hmm. I know that project has been there for a while. Um, I'm happy to hear, you know, it's about to take right. some root. Tell us uh, where, where we are at this juncture. Good. So, V4 um that area, I mean, it is one of the um, largest areas in terms of communities in, in, in St. Lucia. It mm -hmm. is seen as, a, as going to be a, a booming economic hub in the years to come. Correct. So the water supply is very important for very that important. there. Um, it has suffered in the past from, in terms of from both quantity and quality issues. Quantity in terms of our dry season, like right now, where the, the levels do drop a lot, and, you know, residents... In the, in, the, in the far reach of the community do have a problem with supply. And when the rain falls, then we get quality issues in terms of the, of the um, stability issues where the plants, because if we, do, we, we lack treatment at our, at our proper treatment at our, our, at our treatment plants, the plants have to shut down and mm -hmm. then again, we have, residents are affected. So the Viewport project was essentially um, conceptualized to make, to bring these improvements to the area. Um, 
what has happened, so essentially we have two systems there. Um, one one is that is um, function from the, from the Grace Water Treatment Plant and, it's an, and the other from the Beausage Water Treatment Plant. The Grace Water Treatment Plant provides the bulk of the supply. In the new project, essentially, we will be re replacing or upgrading these city plants for these, for these two areas. Okay? Um, we have commenced the what we call a phase one of the Viewport project. We um, signed, um, we engaged a contractor, and that contract was signed late last year, in December of last year, and the project formally commenced in March of this year. Okay. So, letting everybody know that that project has started. It's a design build project. So right now the contractor is in a de is is doing the design works for the um for the project, and then he will move into the construction phase. And we anticipate that will be probably by July of this year. Okay. What does the project involve? Essentially, it involves um, as I said, the two main treatment plants will be rebuilt at Grace and Beausjour, okay. but we're also building a new intake at Grace to accommodate the increased flows that we would need for the Grace plant. We are building, um, we are rehabilitating the existing raw water line that comes from Grace, to, to, from Grace intake to the Grace water treatment plant. Then we are also build, um, increasing the transmission capacities that, that exist in the of Fort. So we're building about four or five new transmission pipelines that will that take water from these water treatment plants to a number of s new storage tanks in, in the area. We are building uh, a tanks at both plants and also we're building plants at, at Labory and at Latony. This will provide us with extra capacity, probably about a million more gallons of water in terms of storage for the for the for the Pure Fort area. Wow. So the project <coughs> as I said therefore contains the, the building of the intakes, the water treatment plants, the pump. We have a pump station also at Bosaju which is going to be built, mm -hmm. as well as the transmission lines and the storage and the storage tanks. It's going, the first phase of the project is going to last about 18 months. So it will be that the first phase will finish in about September of next year. And then there's proposed a second stage, which we should basically seek to um, finish off the project, especially with the building of the Bosaju water treatment plant. We'll be doing the Grace water treatment plant in the first phase, okay. and then the Bosaju plant in the second phase. So, but what, once the first phase is finished, that will bring an immediate impact to the Viewfort area through the Grace plant. And then we will be providing additional capacities once the um, waste tree plant is finished. And that'll be another six months on. So, at the, from, so about two years from now, we will have a new system within in the field, which will provide a lot of relief to the residents of that very area. Very good, very good. Timothy, um, I know there are concerns about the non-revenue water. Mm. Um, I also know that that one, I don't know if the project has begun, where you had Cubans company you came in to assist that I uh, give us give us an update on that okay well it's not a Cuban but it's Germans we are Germans, not, okay. right the Germans came last year um, I think for about yeah, 12 Germans, months yeah. um, to give us some technical support in terms of um, our non-revenue water um, that program or that first phase was completed I think um, in December last year okay and um, now we into the implementation phase in terms of um, rolling out our um, non revenue water um, projects. However, um, because of the way the year started where COVID-19 came on, and mm -hmm. so we had a lot of disruptions in terms of our normal operations, then the drought set in. So we are not, have not rolled out a number of, uh, but a lot of the, 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 the institutional capacity things, these things are in place in terms of um, our uh, procedural um, 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 stuff. Um, these things have been implemented, but the actual work on the ground, um, we have not rolled out everything yet because of the various um, um, interruptions we have. But, but that's something that we have as our number one priority. When, things get, when things get back to normal. Right, to in terms of our non-revenue water, because that's, um, yeah, that's, a, that's, an that's issue. a big issue for us, and that's something that we, um, the board has made a number one priority in terms of we getting that. Um, uh, do you think it's well, because of our, the, our infrastructure is so, so old? Yes, because um, most of our infrastructure, a lot of our major infrastructure is over 50 years. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the major line from, say, Shock to Grosley. It was built in what, 1971, thereabout. And you're talking about a pipeline that's in the ground in maybe different type of soil. Um, so after a while, you sure. know, these lines would have to be changed, mm -hmm. um, upgrade works in a lot of areas. And not only that, too, you talk about um, the size of the pipelines. Maybe right. it was useful say 15, 20 time, years yes, ago, yes, yes. but you know the North has grown significantly. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you have more hotel stock, you have more household stock, you have a lot of developments where that the where you where you had, where you had maybe a say a eight inch pipeline would have been to supply all these persons comfortably. And um, now it will not be to do that. So you have to look now at redesign your system, uh, maybe create more redundancy in your network and stuff like that. So it's work in progress, and we we uh, there's a lot of capital, um, you know, a lot of mm -hmm. money, mm -hmm. which will have to be spent now to to do this all these various things. But we looking at um, you know them doing them in various phases, looking at prioritizing, see which ones have to be done first. Um, in terms of um, especially the the north line, we realize that they have some issues because of the age, and then there are some points where you think that we may be losing some water because of of the integrity of the line. So yeah. all these things. A part of our whole um, plan okay. for the future. Great. Okay, as we are winding down, Mr. Weg, I, I know the so many other projects that we wanted to talk about. The Tiroshi water um, project, which is from Mikoto, I, I know that was done. Mm -hmm. I know we have the Buta project. But any final words as we are about to end from you, sir? Well, um, just come back a bit, make full circle back to John Compton at JCD, basically, mm -hmm. and um, we are also implementing the, the millet intake project, mm -hmm. okay? Whereby millet intake essentially augments the supply from John Compton, where it supports the supply to the John Compton Dam. Right. That intake uh, is, will be rehabilitated uh, to provide, uh, I think it's about 5 million gallons of water. Mm -hmm. And we're also building a new pipeline from that, which mm -hmm. will get back to the John Compton, which will go back to, to the pipeline that supplies the John, okay. from John Compton Dam to the, to the um, treatment plant. Okay. So that's one more, area that one more project which will come on stream and will help immensely in providing a better water supply. Final words from you, Sharon? Well, I just want to implore patience from our customers. I know this is a very difficult time for people who are maybe not able to access water as frequently as they used to. We are facing a drought situation and I just want to assure people that we at Wasco are doing all in our power to get the supply of water to our customers as frequently and as regularly as possible under the circumstances. Great. Final words from you, sir? Well, first, I think I need to thank all our employees. Um, I think um, it has been a challenging time for everybody at Wasco, and I would like to thank them for their continuous hard work to, to, to reach our customers, to repair the pipelines, um, and to even supply our customers. And I would like to thank the customers too for, you know, giving us information, because without information we will not be able to act. Um, I know some persons do not get water as regular as they want, but we try our best to reach everybody and we just like to thank them for the you know the patience exercise and, and and you know continue calling us to give us the feedback great thank you very much well <laughs> mr white thank you jerry Ann, thank you of course um mr james thank you very much for being here i look forward for a part two because there's a lot more to be discussed <laughs> there are lots of projects you know in the pipeline so i really want to thank you for being here You've been watching agriculture on the move. We had Tim Wasco with us. And as you know, water is life. We need water for agriculture. Please conserve water, store water, build tanks, buy tanks. The bankers are giving loans for tanks. I'm Philip Sidney. Stay safe. <laughs>